Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 2 Kita Edition. Uh -huh. no, uh -uh. Just kidding. Uh, not really, it is Kita Edition, but we're going to start off by warping right back to um, Vendrick, and we're going to go talk to him. And then after we talk to him, we're going to check out the box souls, and then we're going to get back on track. So I will uh, quick cut it now to Vendrick. I'll see you guys in a moment. Alright guys, we are back in the memory of the king, and I believe Vendrick will say something new to us now that I'm wearing this crown. Uh, he definitely does if you beat the game, but let's check up on if we have this crown. Seeker of fire, deliverer of crowns. What do you see in the flames? Your future. Find the crowns and your own answers. The crowns hold the strength of lords from times long past. Seek adversity. As befits you, seeker of fire, coveter of the throne. I am no king. I am more fit to be a jester. I was unaware of my own blindness. We are feeble vessels with feebler souls. We would cast aside the prop of life only to face greater hardship. Are you another such fool? Or something more? I fail to see your design, young moth. What? I'm wearing trick clothes. Awesome. I see very little these days. Alright, so that's all. Um, I think that's new from what we saw last time. Um, I'm kind of like blurring what I knew from before as opposed to what we looked at last time, so I should have watched my last Let's Play just to see. Kind of just glancing. I'm curious to see if there's anything different about this area. It seems like there's not as much light shining through. It's definitely darker, but that could just be because of the memory thing. But, yeah, I was just curious to see if the actual area was different. So, anyways, I will see you guys at Ornifex's place. So, this uh, crown I'm wearing, I forgot to show off the stats that it changes. So let's go ahead and uh, show that off. So, I, I think, yeah, uh, alright, so let me go ahead and just equip what I had before. Yeah. I'll equip what I had before and you'll be able to see the stat changes. So, you can see that what it's going to do. I don't think I showed this last time. I think I forgot to. So, let me just go over to it. So you can see that I'm going to get uh, one more vi vigor, or sorry, one less vigor, because now this is taking it off. Yeah, you know, let me just... This will make it less confusing, so I don't have to go backwards when I'm showing off these numbers. Alright, so... Whoops. I'm gonna get one less vigor. I'm gonna get, uh, one more endurance. One less vitality. One more strength. One more dexterity. One more, um... On intelligence. And then... One more on faith. So... You can see that it actually affects your actual stats of your character by wearing this crown. And some people will find this to be a uh, bonus, and some will find it to be a detriment depending on what you're looking for, but I think that's actually really worth pointing out. So, I'm imagining that every crown we find is going to somehow affect you in that way, and maybe that will be telling of the king who stay there. At least I hope that'll be the case. But let's go ahead and talk to Ortifex, if you, I re who requires some wondrous souls. Oh, I got wondrous souls. Blow your mind, Ornifex! They will blow your mind. Oh, actually. Yeah, okay, cool. I was like, is it Orn Effects? There's your Spear, and yeah. I was like, oh, God, what if it was supposed to be, uh... What if it was supposed to be strayed? That would be, that would have been funny. All right, so. Yorg's Spear is what you get for the Soul of Sin. And it's a spear wielded by Sir Yorg during his invasion of the Sanctum City. After his defeat of the Sunken King, important line there that people seem to skip over, Sir Yorg pierced Sin, the sleeping dragon, with this spear to claim its blood. But Sin immediately awoke, spewing a poisonous fog that blanketed the city in death, and Sir Yorg disappeared into the Eternal Sanctum. So for the most part, this is stuff that we'd learned through other item descriptions, but the really key word thing here, in my opinion, is after his defeat of the Sunken King. So he actually had to plow through the Sunken King, presumably with the spear, in order to reach Sin. So, from my understanding, based off of that line, the Sunken King is dead. So, that would imply that he's not the Rotten, he's not any other character, he's just, he's dead. Uh, then the Wraithful Axe we get from Alana. 
An armament forged from the soul of Alana, Child of Dark. Use strong attacks to unleash its latent power. When the abyss dissipated, the things that call it home were fragmented and scattered across the realm. Eventually, these pieces regained forms and ways that hinted at humanity's true nature. So this is where we really get that connection to Nishandra, is really from this piece, even though I talked about it before. It's that whole, when the abyss dissipated, all right, you're getting that connection to Manus. Uh, the things I call it home were fragmented and scattered, so again, strong, strong connection to Manus. And Nishandra, because Nishandra is basically the exact same description there. So that's from her Wraithful Axe. So anyways, I will once again fast warp, and I'm going to go ahead and go to the Force of Fallen Giants, because that is our next destination, so I will see you guys shortly. Alright, so we are back at the Force of Fallen Giants, and what we're going to go ahead and do now is go talk to the various giant trees uh, throughout the area, which... Uh, so one of them, I, I can't get it to it this way, but if you re recall... There is this area down there with that tree that we saw before, so that's going to be the one with the giant lord in it and our boss fight. So that's one of the ones that we're going to go to. Uh, then there's a couple just outside near here, so... Uh, let's just go ahead and, I guess, and go sort of... I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of an order to go, but I guess any order will do. I think what you really want to do is talk to the captain first, Drummond, or Captain Drummond, and that will help with some of the invasors, or some of the soldiers not attacking you, supposedly. Something to that extent, but I don't think I ever got that to work properly for me. But that's what the guide said, according to the guide that EMB and German Spy worked on. Or Franz and Marcus, I should say. Uh, so this is one of the ones that we can go into. You know, it's funny, the, the whole area, I haven't even gone into the other area yet where um, the Katarina Knight's at. But that whole area with the Katarina Knight, to me, is such a pointless area. I think you can get a... Uh, a sapling or the, one of the seeds from the trees in that area, but other which is good for PvP. But other than that, as far as like there, the tree that's there, the giant tree, doesn't do anything uh, other than that. So it's kind of just an area to go to. All right, so we are here in the memory of Vamar, or uh, so, yeah, I think that's Vamar or Vamar, and this is the one with Dramond, I think, if I remember the way that it looks. Yeah, all right, so there's uh, Dramond. So the whole Drank Lake male, as you can see, that is what he is wielding. And he's going to go ahead and actually give us the final piece of the Drank Lake set. What are you doing here? So that, because he's wearing that and it's passed down through his family, you are not that implies that he actually soldiers. died here and that's why we find his second And I don't take cool. you for a mercenary. Whoever you are, this is no battle to involve yourself in. But I want to involve myself so I can get the giant kinship, Whether you, don't you are understand? guided by bravery or brashness. <laughs> this is no place for you. So Dramon's actually going to give us a lot of really good lore. Another thing that I, I actually only just noticed, this is the Dranglea crest. And uh, you can see that hanging from there, that flag. So again, just indicating that those are the soldiers fighting, or Dranglea soldiers. So I only just noticed that. I am Drummond. And the Lord has placed this fort in my hands. Whoever you are, I forgive your trespass, but leave this place immediately. I'm just trying to help, bro. I'm just trying to help. Just mention my name, and no man will challenge your exit. So I think that's supposed to set it off so the other and soldiers don't And even if you don't, you. by now, my men have not the will to resist. Soon, the giants will descend upon this fort. It is revenge for the kingdom's misguided barbarism. The venerable lord built this kingdom to bring prosperity to his subjects. What has transformed him so, I cannot imagine. So it seems hinted that it's probably Nishandra that transformed him, or changed him. And talking to Vendrick, we're really not sure yet. It could just be the fire or him discovering undead and that leading to everything uh, as he kind of became afraid of undead or learned the pointlessness of the cycles and all that, and maybe that's what changed him. Uh, the initial speculations were in the Chandra, and hopefully with DLC we'll, we'll continue to find that out. But again, it's basically like he, he built up this kingdom of Dranglek, and we're finding out that it, it has to involve the giants, and we'll find out more now. Long ago, the king crossed the seas pillaged the land of giants and bought back a prize. It was then that the golems materialized. 
The giants are no ordinary barbarians. A singular rage burns within their hearts. My father and his father both fought the giants on this very land. The giants have wills of steel. They cannot find it within themselves to forgive the misdeeds of our Lord. So the giants have literally been sieging this place for multiple generations if Drummond's father and grandfather have fought in this war. That's multiple generations. The other line here is one that people have been speculating on is that King Vendrick stole a prize from the giants. So what was that prize? A lot of people think it could be the giant kinship, which seems possible um, because that's what seems to make the golems move for you at the end of the game if you go to the Throne of Want. So that is how you get the golems to move. The other way to get the golems to move is with souls. So it could be some sort of giant soul or something. But it, it seems very possible and plausible that it could be the giant kinship because that's what you need in order to cross into the Throne of Want. And that's what actually moves the golems. Now, the one thing on the other hand is that kind of, in my mind, counters that is that the giant kinship is currently being held by the giant lord. So if they got their prize back, you'd think that maybe they would lay off the siege and leave. But then, uh, according to their own soul description, they... They're always constantly pissed off, basically. Will the giant's resentment for the king be pacified in death or only emboldened, uh, as the soul of the giants say? So that kind of continues on with what Dramond was telling us. Uh, the soul of a giant who came to conquer and drain Glick. Did you see him? That towering monster among them. So that would be the giant lord that he's talking about? That is most certainly their king. He will be a thing to topple. <laughs> Even if I should die trying. I actually find him a little bit easier than some of the soldiers. My blade That's probably may just because I'm used to trying to fight him. Fall wide, but my will shall never be broken. Those Oh shoot, I didn't know. Be gone with that. you. This fort will be gone before the giants. Okay, I'm out. Peace. He asked me to leave, so I left. Alright, so technically you don't actually have to go through any of these except for the one with the giant lord that's the only one you actually have to finish to beat the game but doing these well if you go all the way through not only do you get items but you also get uh souls of a giant and there's a total of five you can get in each playthrough so by getting each uh by getting each one it'll help you kill vendrick which again indicates they are still pissed off at vendrick even in death that is what that indicates because each one uh completely uh helps to uh, basically divide the damage that you do on him. And if you get all five, it makes him really easy. I mean, he's never necessarily that hard to kill. He's incredibly slow. He just has so much health that your weapons are going to break, unless you get at least a few giant souls. That's really the concern, is your weapons breaking, and just the fact that he hurts you for a lot if he hits you. He's just incredibly slow, so it's really easy to dodge, in my opinion. But you just have to um, actually get to the point where you can hurt him. I never know. I always forget about this way. Hmm. What do you know? Don't, don't, don't blow up on me, please. <laughs> I, I really always forget about this one. Five smooth and silky stones. That's not one that you want to forget. I was like, wait a second. This, this door. This door to. Oh wait. Let me let me talk to him and make sure that's. Everything. Be gone with you. Be gone. Yeah, yeah. That was. Oh wait. Learn gesture. Hurrah. Oh, Be I almost missed that. You. For some reason, I thought he gave Be you the Drangle Lake helmet. Let's like. I already have the Drain Lake helmet? I don't think I do. Don't have it. I thought that was how I got it. Oh no, I thought I was gonna be able to get through him. I was wrong. Oh, there we go. Thank you for letting me through. Listen, I, I don't wanna have to kill you, but if you're gonna like try and pound my head in, then we gotta, I, I gotta rectify this situation where I don't die. Sorry, man. Sorry, if you faceless hole in your head, dude. He's got a big hole in your face. That's why you're mindless. That, that actually probably could be the idea for why they changed up the design. Are you pyros out there? There's another fire seed. And these guys, uh... Oh, shoot. I find the ones with the clubs a little more difficult. The sorcery ones I don't find too bad, but yes, yeah, so let's just the club ones. Alright, come on, come on. Let's let's uh, let's get to the point where I can go around you. All right. That'd be cool. That oh shoot, he's gonna hit me. Oh wow, how did that not hit me? How did that not hit? Wow, I got really lucky there. 
His entire flurry missed me somehow. Oh man, I am just not doing good. Oh, you can backstab them? I never knew that. I never knew that. Well, I'm learning new things. Alright, so this is one of the sorcery ones. Oh, shoot. He's got a poison hand. Alright. B roll through. And let's try to backstab another. Oh, no. No, no, no! Alright, let's try not to backstab then. If that's what's going to happen. That, yeah, that is a new thing for me. Learn new things all day, every day. And rolling through things, breaking things every day. This guy was nameless. You know what we find here is a great collection of books. This one book right here shows up everywhere. That copy, I think it's in the the mansion in Majula. I think it's also in the chamber in um, the Lord's private chambers by Freya. I don't think it means anything. I just it's probably just them reusing an asset, honestly. But uh, I don't know. just want to say, I guess, point it out. All right, so we're gonna let the giants and the guys battle it out, their soldiers battle it out. That is totally cool with me. Oh, yeah, totally cool with me. They can battle out all they want. I'm, I'm not here. I'm, I'm in and out. I wasn't even here. Is this a treasure chest? Yes, it is. Except for getting a treasure chest. That I want. Keep on getting worried. I'm gonna get smacked from behind. Lost some kite shield is over there. And for some reason, I didn't realize this one was the dead end. You have to go through the building. All right. And any other items over here? I guess not. Oh wait, you can climb up this. I never really fully explored this area. Um, I like I explored a lot of it, but I guess I never really fully fleshed it out. It's because I always get nervous about the time running out, which is not a good excuse, but that's just what it is. Oh sh! Oh man! All right. Let's see if there's anything over here. Yep, there is. All right. Gonna get it just to find out. It's over right here on a bonfire aesthetic. Bonfire aesthetic to me being the, the really good one. Souls are like, I don't know. You get so many souls in this game, it's not that big of a deal to me. Cool, thanks for smacking the back of me. Let's go ahead and end this. End this thing by getting the soul of the giant. Before the ashen mist fades. Alright, so here we can see more war and devastation. Um, I'm kind of mixed on how I feel about this whole area. Oh, oh, the ashen mist has faded. Then that. Okay, I get it, it's thinning. I'm, I just want my rogue water, that's really important to me. And up here is going to be the actual soul. As you can see. Oh, okay, come on, guy. Come on, I'm not trying to do anything. Just want to get the giant soul, you know You know what I'm saying? And, oh, what's this going to be? Soul of a great hero and a torch. Cool. Haha. <laughs> Alright, so then if I examine that guy again, that'll actually be the end and wrap up here. Those are the big ones that were at the bottom of um, the Grave of Saints. Uh, not the Grave of Saints. The gutter... The Black Gulch. Those were the guys who were at the bottom of the Black Gulch, were those giant ones right there. With the multiple clubs. So that's what that guy was. A little bit dangerous. A little really bit dangerous. Alright, so now we've got three souls of giants. And again, there's a total of five. So let's go ahead and get to our next one. Hey, buddy. Just gonna run through because I don't care. You shouldn't care. Alright, so the next one that we're gonna go to is um, up by where the Pursuer was at. And that's actually where we're gonna find Ben Hart. And I don't know if we have to talk to him in the memory in order to use him against the Giant Lord. I'm not sure if that's actually a requirement for the Giant Lord. But we're gonna do it regardless. And then I think, actually, I've, I know I've used him at least twice. So I think if I use him a third time now in this next memory for the Giant Lord and get him to survive, he should give us our gear. And I'll wrap up the Ben Hart storyline. Well, we meet again. What are you doing here? I came here to see you, Ben Hart. Come on. Who'd have thought we'd meet in a place like this? <laughs> Fate just won't let us stay apart. Will she? <laughs> nope. And that's the way I like it, Ben Hart. Because I'm gonna rip out your body and take your moon, moon great sword. See, nothing, the old nothing. sword's caught your attention. Well, you've a good eye then. Yeah, I got a pretty good eye. That has been in my family for generations. They say it is crafted with moonlight. And we all know what that means. It wards off evil. Well, as long as you got the baby Ruth and effect going on. And I would be trader 
for all the, the riches effect. in the world. It's said that no man has ever teased out the sword's true power. Because it ain't got but no true power. And the right horns. <laughs> really though, he does have the placebo effect going on pretty nicely. I see you've taken a liking to the sword. Well, I applaud you. For you've a sharp eye. But this is one sword, pal. I wouldn't be giving up. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. If you still insist on having it, then you will have to pry it from my cold horns. <laughs> I think that's an invitation to kill him. And I accept! But we'll, we'll see if I can finish your quest instead. Have a great day to you. And I'll never forget it. I know, it. it's worth your Blue Moon Greatsword. I, Ben Hart, swear by my honor to aid you in your darkest hour, so no problem, pal. Have a great day to I really wish I hadn't forgotten to use him against the Looking Glass Knight. Because then we would have actually had three with him and that would have wrapped him up, but... That's alright. Because uh, I think actually the DLC one counts. When we used him there. So this would be giant that you can warp through. Number two of three. And... Yeah, this one again, it's really just for a solo giant. And also for Ben Hart. Really, this one is like the uh, Talk to Ben Hart one. There's a couple speculations on why Ben Hart is in this area. Uh, one speculation is that this is actually an ancestor we're talking to. Except for him to know who you are and give you the Blue Moon Greatsword to me would indicate... Oh, it's Memory of Oro. Um, which seemed to indicate that it's the same Ben Hart as before. Plus you get his gear, which is described as the Ben Hart Jugo gear. Plus Ben Hart, if you read his gear, got this gear from his traveling. So it wouldn't be like his ancestor's gear. It's his gear. Oh. Look at you, old friend. See, old friend? He knows us. I see it travels way upon you yet. So somehow he's got an Ashen Mist Heart as well. Just remember, I'm always ready to help. My homeland is in the Far East. And it's called Jugo. Kingdom of honorable fighting men. And this sword, yeah, awaits a true man to wield it. Yeah, Jugo's like a desert area. Uh, I, I know, know I've mentioned in the past, but everyone is not sure. <laughs> My homeland is an... an... Alright, thank you for the info, Ben Hart. So we're gonna go up here first, because I believe this is... I don't think this is the way out. I think this is just the way to, like, a shortcut. Yeah, I thought there was a way to get it so they don't attack you. Uh, I, I'm sure there is, and I just don't know what it is. Yeah, these actually look like dudes, so I guess they, they aren't, uh... They're actually people, because... They're not like green, like nasty. They actually are soldiers. Yeah, you can actually see their faces. I, I never really thought to pay attention to it before, but I guess that's a nice attention to detail. They actually do have normal faces, and they aren't completely hollowed out. All right, so let's go ahead and use a Ferris Lockstone here. And Ferris Lockstone's not gonna get us too much. I think there's actually like a trap or something, but uh, the main thing is that there's going to be this other Ferris Lockstone. I think there's actually like a secret passage as well around here. Maybe that's what this actually is. Trap up ahead and then weakness illusory wall. Oh. oh. Yeah, that's literally all we did was set open this trap. My bad. I knew there was a trap. I thought it might have been Ferris Lockstone related, but... Uh, I guess I never really put that Ferris Lockstone in. So... I just never actually activated the trap on myself. The first time was just because I ran out of Ferris Lockstones. And after that, I just happened to know uh, that that was supposed to be a trap. Fire Seed, times one. More stuff for Pyros. The entire steel set. Uh, which I actually don't remember much about. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, a relic of an order of knights said to be the mightiest warriors of their time. So there is that steel set. I'm actually blanking out on who steel, the steel set is from Dark Souls 1. So I'm, I'm, I apologize for that. Um, hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Roll away, roll away. Oh, missed that roll really poorly. Not well done at all on my part. But we'll get three Soul of Heroes. That's just a lot of Souls of Heroes. So let's see, I think up is the way that we're actually supposed to go. Let's see. Try fire. I don't know, I got no fire. Yeah, I think this is actually the correct way. Oh, whatever. We'll just go back into the memory. Memories. Oh no, that did not go well for me. 
at all. Oh, shoot. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. Get no. <laughs> I'm gonna go downstairs first, actually. I'm just, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go downstairs. We'll do that. And, um, we'll come back. Whoa, that guy. His head was kind of misplaced a little bit there. Alright, so let's go into this room. First. So I'm kind of just totally blanking out on what's in this memory. Oh, this is okay. I guess that they both take you to the same place, but one of them starts you upstairs. Oh, okay, cool. So now we got the soldiers taking care of the giants, and yeah, well, you know, here's a memory for us, so. Soul of the giant. Alright, well, I guess we can try to explore a little bit. Holy crap. Hey, buddy. Remember when I didn't do anything to you? Yeah, I remember that. But I'm about to shortly. I guess when we go back for Ben Hart, I'll explore the rest of it. Because I'm going to go back after I use Ben Hart with the Giant Lord. Sorry about all these loading screens. I guess I should just be cutting, but if I'm kind of in the middle of talking about something. I'm just going to keep on going with it. And that's how I'm going to do it. We're actually pretty close to wrapping up Dark Souls 2 at this point. Um, I didn't, I don't know. For some reason, I didn't realize just how close we are. I'm not sure if this episode will be able to finish or not. I kind of imagine that I'll be close to it, but not quite. Alright, let's go ahead and heal up first. And then, oh, wait a second. This, yeah, this was the way. Cool. I'm gonna heal up. and Oh, actually, no, I don't need to. I'm just gonna use the King's Ring. And there's a bonfire right past there. So I'm gonna heal up, I'm gonna go into the area with the King's Ring, and then I do want to also finish exploring the Forest of Fallen Giants, because I didn't do that. And I imagine that'll wrap up this Let's Play. And then from there I'll end up having the final DLC, well not the final, but the next DLC. And basically once I have the uh, Giant's Kinship, it's just going to the end of the game. So that's pretty much gonna be that. And once I finish Dark Souls 2, at the moment I'm not really planning on doing a New Game Plus playthrough. There are some really cool things that are in a New Game Plus playthrough that I definitely recommend checking out on your own. But after I finish Dark Souls 2, I'm definitely going to do both DLCs. But I'll probably end up... I'm not sure when, but I will pro definitely end up at some point doing a Demon Souls playthrough. And that's my plan. And I do want to finally actually finish off the Dark Souls 1 playthrough. I have it recorded, I just need to do the audio. So that's something that I want to get finished, because it bothers me that I don't have that finished. So that's definitely a big thing that I would like to do. Alright, I kind of forgot what ring I took out for this. Let's see, ring of blaze, third dragon, oh, stone ring. Alright, stone ring. Where are you at, stone ring? There it is. Alright, so... Uh, if you remember, you can... So at this point we can drop down there as well, which I'm not going to do at this point. I think there's some items down here. Uh, yeah, so there's that item right there, which we can now get. If you're wondering at the very beginning of the game how the hell you get up there, here is how. And... Yeah, anyways, I think... So Demon Souls is gonna be my next playthrough after Dark Souls 2. Um... And then I'm also... I want to finish my Dark Souls 1 playthrough. It's just literally the final episode. It's already recorded with Kida blazing through at level 6 style. I just need to actually you know, do the audio and correct it. And the thing is, I've been so, so much in Dark Souls 2 mode that I my Dark Souls 1 lore knowledge while it's there. It's not as strong as it was before where I could just do it off the cuff real easily. And I thought I did such an awesome episode talking about lore in my final Dark Souls 1 episode that I really want to make sure that it, it holds up in my mind. Oh uh, yeah, we can also summon Captain Drummond here. I forgot about that. We're going to summon Ben Harder Jugo in a moment. Let's actually... Uh, Alright, whatever, let's just summon him. I wanted to show off the the giant, but I guess I'll show off the giant after I run through here. I always have trouble with Ben Hart surviving this. Okay, so explosion already went off, that's good. And yeah, so the giant, by the way, who has the creepy face, oh shoot, is right there, as you can see. Oh shoot, I didn't think that was actually gonna hit me. And okay, so if you remember that head that we saw before that was just kind of off of the statue, this is where it ended up being. So really cool detail right there. I think that's awesome that they they actually have that minor detail. And yeah, I, I love that about this area. Okay, don't. Okay, not a good start at all. Okay, he's gonna stop. This should give us a moment to 
Get some health back. Okay, cool. Alright. What you got? What you got? What you got? Cool. My, my main problem with him is I, I have trouble seeing his attacks. So a lot of times I like to go up to... Uh, okay, he's gonna attack. I see it. I see it. So a lot of times I like to go up to the middle section just so I can see what he's going to do. That's really why I do that. He also should have... Oh! Roll, roll, roll. He also sh How did that hit me? He also should have more health right now because I summoned Ben Hart. That's actually going to give him more health, which is great. Where the hell is Ben Hart, speaking of which? Oh, he's having trouble along the way. That was my concern. Uh, okay. S this again because I'm not doing too hot. Ben Hart. Yeah, I, I just got to kill this guy faster because... Ben Hart's always gonna have trouble making it. Okay, well, we got Ben Hart here, so at least we got that. Okay. Nice stab and a miss. He's gonna stomp on Ben Hart. Ben Hart's a trooper, though. He's doing alright, sort of, somewhat. Oh, jeez. I'm not doing alright. I keep on doing poop. Oh, no! Really? I died from the fire? Oh, that was just bad playing. All right, see you guys in a moment. Well, the other thing that I want to point out as I'm summoning Ben Hart of Jugo is that it is Ben Hart of Jugo. So for anyone who thinks it's an ancestor, unless all of his ancestors held his exact same name, uh, this is a this is the same guy because it's Ben Hart of Jugo that we're seeing. So I do think that's worth pointing out. Oh no! Why are you attacking me, soldier? You, don't you have giants to fight? Oh, crap. Alright. That was close. Hopefully Ben Hart won't die, but he probably will, because Ben Hart... Alright, let's see. Fire. Let's wait for the catapults. Uh, for some reason, I thought that would be further away. Alright. Whoa! I've actually never seen that attack before. That was totally new for me. Oh, Ben Hart's already here. Nice. Alright. Ben Hart, we got this. We got this, buddy. Teamwork. Teamwork time. You got you actually got some health. I've got some health. Let's make this happen. It's all on me to not lose it for us. Alright. Oh, what, what's on his chest, though, actually? I, I, I like that he has a crown, too. But I'm not sure. I'm curious what that symbol on his chest is. Alright, I'm going for Ben Hart. Ben Hart, don't die on me. Don't die on me, Ben Hart. Oh, crap. No, Ben Hart! Ben Hart! You can't die, otherwise we gotta do this again. Alright, alright, alright. Giant Lord's almost dead. Come on, Ben Hart. Come on. We got one more. One more. Ben Hart survived. Ben Hart survived. Oh. Oh, that was close. Ben Hart, close one. Don't don't run away and die on me. All right, we got the giant lore soul. We got the giant's kinship. Things are good. Things are good indeed. All right, so uh, with him gone and dead, let's go ahead and actually finish checking everything out. Right, let's go ahead and get our fire seed. And okay, now that that explosion's through, let's go ahead and grab whatever this is. Old radiant life gem. Totally worth it. Totally. I think it's a safe zone by this head. Gotta watch out. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta watch out for those catapults there. Okay, so, uh, as I was talking about before, the really cool thing to me is this, uh, or if you're ever wondering, this is where that giant head is. That really creepy one that people have pointed out. So that is where that is, and, uh, I think it looks really cool just because it's so creepy, and I just love creepy things. So I, I get the, I, I understand the design decision to change it. It was probably for the sake of um, these faceless beings that you're fighting, and also possibly for the idea of that's why they're so mindless and they have wheels of steel and work together. I, I think it could relate to that, but I just love creepy things, and that just looks so creepy to me. I, I just really prefer those faces. At least the way it looked on that giant, that specific one. I don't know if they weren't charred out, if it would be as awesome. But that is our final soul of a giant right there that we've got. So now we have five. And that will actually lead us out of this area. So with that, 
we're going to go talk to Benhart again, because that is now three bosses he's helped me out with. And with that done, he should be giving us his, uh, his armor set and his Blue Moon Greatsword. So what I'm going to do this time is actually fast cut it to that point, and I will see you guys in a moment. Actually, I lied. I'm not going to fast cut it yet. I'm going to start it here right after the giant because what I want to do is show getting this item right here. So that is two twinkling titanites that were by the giants, which were a slightly bigger deal. <laughs> slightly, slightly bigger. The other thing you can do too is if you remember that ambush point, you could jump to it before, but this is uh, another way to get to this ambush point. Uh, right here where these guys will end up trying to ambush you and falling down on you. So that is another point to do. There's actually a bunch of things for me to do I'm not realizing in this area. So the other place we got to go to or we need to go to is over here now that I have the iron key. So that is going to be another place we're going to head to. Um, yeah, so we got to go there as well. But first we're going to go to the other area. And yeah, I was uh, by Ben Hart. And the other area that has the fallen giant. And then we're going to go ahead and go into the fire. So I will see you guys momentarily. And welcome back to the memory of Oro. Alright, Benhart, this should be it. This should be the one. We have outwitted death a good many times. Yeah, yeah, we have. <laughs> oh, my dear friend. Take these. Okay. So we get the Blue Moon Grey Sword, Benhart's Parma, and Benhart's entire set. And that is how you get it. My homeland is in the Far East. And this so I know. Alright, so let's go ahead and check those out. So Blue Moon Great Sword is obviously not the actual Moonlight Great Sword. The blade of this great sword shines like the brilliant rays of the moon. In the oldest legends rarely spoken of today, it is said that the sword was born of a great white being, which would be Seath that it's indicating. Then what explains the lifeless weapon? Or, you know, if you're talking about Dark Souls. One, it would be Gyra, or sorry, if you're talking about King's Field, it'd be Gyra. Then what explains this lifeless weapon? Perhaps there has been some mistake. And here we have the fact that it's actually blue. See, it doesn't quite look like the Moonlight Grey Sword. And you actually use the soul of the Pale Drake to get the Moonlight Grey Sword, which is again what indicates that it's definitely Sea Soul. That is the soul of the Pale Drake. And that's what we get from uh, defeating Freya in New Game Plus. So. That is how you get that stuff. Actually, let's go ahead and look at his gear as well. So, Benhart's... Benhart's armor. Armor of an unknown origin. Belonged to Benhart of Jugo. Apparently, Benhart found this while wandering land to land. But its origins are unknown. He wore it all the time. He adored it so... He adored it so, leaving a slight order. Odor. Kind of gross. I actually got a couple shields, which I forgot to point out. So, let's go ahead and look at those shields. Uh... If I can remember the one that I picked up while I was kind of running around. So one of the ones that we got... Oh, the Blossom Kite Shield. I don't think that's what we... Maybe it is. A rare shield depicting a blossoming flower that soothes the weary heart of its bearer. What makes flowers beautiful and why are, comfort, are we comforted when we gaze upon them? Sadly, the flowers depicted on this shield went extinct long ago. It's not any real lore on it, but it's another stamina recovery one. So I think that might be the, the one that I just picked up a moment ago. And then... Uh, what is Benhart's one called? Benhart's Parma. Easy. This Parma emblazoned with the family crest of some sort has clearly been around for several generations, but has no special value. And it's all, it's the deer antlers for him. And the whole antler thing that he has on his chest, this is actually the same thing that we see on Crichton. Or Crichton, I should say. So that deer right there is on Crichton's armor as well. So Crichton, whose armor is slightly off and all that, that he picked up, supposedly in Mira, uh, is actually... The exact same stuff that Benhart has. And Benhart apparently picked up, as I just read, his armor while traveling. So it would indicate either Benhart got his armor from Mira, or, uh, I don't know, it could indicate several other things as well. But one possibility being the whole, um, Ben, or, I guess, um, it's from Mira. And then also, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you can really give that much speculation about Crichton because of that. Although I think it's really similar, except for there's, like, marks all over Crichton's. Like, gashes and such. Alright, uh, I guess that wraps this up. There might have been another item that I missed, but... Oh, there you have Drangle Crest again. All smeared right all over there. Alright, and I guess, uh, this time... Yeah, I'll just, I'll just keep playing. I won't fast warp it. Blue Moon Greatsword story. I don't know if I told this in my previous episode when we first saw Ben Hart, but... When I was playing the game at an event in San Francisco... 
Uh, this is an event where I met Orbo or the Ninja, uh, or Brandon. I met Ty or Dreaded Cone. So at this event, and I also met Solo, uh, who also who does Twitch streams. And we were all playing this game together, and uh, well, at the same time, we were all kind of in the same session playing Dark Souls 2 and getting like a sneak peek of it. And Brandon was kind of like just trying to fly through as fast as he could. Whereas I was reading every item description I possibly could and trying to like mentally take notes so I could actually uh, give you guys some information on all that stuff. And I'm sure Brandon, you know, was seeing everything he could see and how difficult it was and was able to do play wise. And meanwhile, like we all kind of stumbled upon the Blue Moon Grey Sword. And I was, John, my friend, was also there. And John was sitting next to me and he was like, Dave, Dave, check this out and show me the Blue Moon Grey Sword. Or just that Ben Hart was holding what it looked like. The blue, uh, the great sword, and it looked like the moonlight great sword because I couldn't, I just didn't notice the whole blue detail of it. So we were just like, what? And then it turned out that Dreaded Cone had just decided, you know, go ahead and murder Ben Hart and check out the blue moon great sword. And he was the one who discovers the blue moon great sword, and we we're all like, oh, what does it mean? What does it mean? That's the blue moon great sword. What, what is this? So. Turns out there's really not much to it, but it was just kind of funny that at the time we were all like, Oh, oh, oh my god, what, what is the Blue Moon Great Sword? Oh, what is this? What could, what could, what could possibly mean? Turns out not much. Alright, so, another thing that I want to indicate is if anyone ever saw the E3's demos for the game, uh, or anything from E3, this is actually where you started the demo, and we can actually play through a bunch of it now. So, I actually played the demo at E3, and it was actually a lot more difficult, in my opinion, than the game itself, which is why... I, I actually didn't get the shirt I, when I played at E3. I didn't get that much chance to play it very much, but it was, it was I thought it was a lot more difficult. Anyways, or maybe it was just because I was trying to parry everything, and parry is much more difficult. But you start at the top right here, and there's no bonfire or anything. You're kind of just in this room, and it's all closed off, and that's it. And the only way you can go is down. So you go down this ladder, and uh, immediately the only way you can go again, because this was closed off, is you can either you can go over here, you can try going that way, but it's closed off. And then you go over here, and see this hole in the wall? That wasn't there. That didn't exist. So the only way that we could go was through this door. And everything was really dark. It was what you really saw in the, the previews and everything and stuff from E3. So you had to light this, because going down here was pitch black. You couldn't see anything going down here. So all the enemies here were like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. These guys seem pretty tough. Because all you had was a torch in one hand. It was really creepy. And it added another layer to the atmosphere of it. So you see these turtle knights, and, um, I don't know, they just, you know, this is your first time playing it, so it seemed a lot more difficult than they are now that I'm so used to them. But, like, my first time, it was just like, oh, I don't know, these guys seem tough. Especially because, uh, whatever build I was playing, just my weapons didn't do that much damage to them. And, I, I, oh yeah, I was trying to roll the way that I, I usually do from Dark Souls 1, and I guess whatever way they had the agility... Like, me doing this and rolling, it wasn't actually dodging for the same timing that I was so used to in Dark Souls 1. Like, a dodge wouldn't actually calculate and count. So, I was really throwing me off, and I was just like, oh, it's hard to roll away from guys now. I'm used to dodging all the time. And again, it was pitch black here. So, what a lot of people ended up doing, and by the end, I ended up doing, was kind of just running through. And, uh, once people got used to it, and then you run through to this area. So this was the next area to go through, to. And I got here actually playing slow my first time, and just like methodical, the way that you're supposed to play. But it was far more difficult when I actually played the game on my own, again. And you could go through all these rooms, but none of them really meant much of anything. Oh, shoot. I was like, oh no, I got behind him by accident. Not that he does that much damage. And by that I mean does like no damage, but... Uh, yeah, so you could go through all of these rooms, and it didn't matter at all. It was just for the sake of if you wanted to explore and all that. But they had it open for you, too. But it was very much more, like, on rails for the experience. I think it's just because they wanted to get people through. And that is where you get the Bastard Sword, for anyone who wants a Bastard Sword. Randomly. Just gonna say that. Uh, so, I, I guess I'll just keep on going the route that they had, and then I'll come back here. So you go through, end up going through this way, and again, you, you kind of, I, I don't know, by the end, every, there was a lot of people in line to play, even for, the, it was in a little press area, and even in the little press area that I was in, there were just tons of people in line to play, and there were only four open consoles. So you, you had a time limit for how long you were allowed to play, because there were people in line and waiting. 
I mean, there, it would depend on the time of day. Like, you could come at one point and there'd be hardly anyone, but for the most part, there's always someone waiting. And, um, so, you know, they were trying to make it fair for everybody. So, by the end, it was kind of just like, okay, run through and see if, to, if you can get to the Mirror Knight. At the time, that's what he was called, not the Looking Glass Knight, but he was called the Mirror Knight. And run through, see what you can do, and try and face off against the Mirror Knight to win the shirt. So, I mean, the first time, I, I had two chances with the game. The first time, I was just kind of going slow and methodical, and the second time, I was like, okay, I gotta just get to Mirror Knight and see if I can beat it. Mirror Knight, by the way, is like four times the size it is in the game. Or at least two times the size. So, you end up running this way. And you get to over, uh... Okay, well, the first thing that happens... First thing that happens is, like, you get here and all of a sudden red phantoms appear out of nowhere. Like, four red phantoms just get summoned and start chasing you as soon as you get into this room. So you go over here and then you get to this bonfire. And getting to this bonfire ended up being just a warp point, And that's all it did. And the warp point ended up warping you over to where the, uh... The hallway with the horse-headed knights are. And the mirror knight. And that is all it did. All right, let's go ahead and pick up the Sea of the Tree of Giants. I think that that ends up just appearing every so often. A giant rests in peace. So that's all this area is, really, is to get more of those. And I love those items for PvP. I just think it's fun. It, it just makes me laugh when someone's invading me, and they can't find me or something, or I'm waiting around, or I'm in an area and I just haven't killed that many enemies because I was running through for whatever reason. Just to be like, okay, I'm just going to turn on all the enemies against you. And it's just, I don't know. Even if I don't see it, it just really makes me laugh. Just And just, like, seeing them eventually die. I'm like, well, sorry. <laughs> Shouldn't have invaded me. I I find it hilarious. I wish there were more of them. All right, we're going to get the whole hunter hat, leather armor, leather gloves. I think the hunter hat actually might be... Let me check this out. I think the, this is the one that was uh, another continuation from Dark Souls 1. If I remember correctly. Where is that hunter hat? I guess I should just be looking at the picture. No, that's Luca Teal. Oh, there it is. Hunter's hat, yeah. So, a leather hat with a large brim. Traditionally used by bow hunters, the hunting goddess Elvana, or Evlana, was no goddess at all, but rather a brave and highly skilled bow huntress. Long after her demise, the passing of lore transformed her into a deity. Uh, so, that kind of gives you a little thing about gods in this game. That a lot of them, at least Evlana, what we're finding out here wasn't actually a real god, so you have to wonder about all the other gods, including, like, Naralma. Was it actually a god? Because Evlana wasn't, it just kind of became one over time. The other thing about it is the Hunter's Hat is actually from Dark Souls 1. Uh, it's from a famous bowman, who, and it was like a really popular hat that everyone wore, that got popularized. And I'm kind of for blanking out on the name of that bowman, I'm sorry. Or if it was a bowwoman, I, I, again, I apologize, but, um, yeah. And this is actually also how I discovered there was an item over there, and that's how I discovered you could fall through the other area. For the longest time, I was like, how do I get over there? How do I get over there? Uh, Alright, so let's actually continue going through this area, and then I'll rest at the bonfire. And uh, from there, from the bonfire, I guess I'll go down through the, uh, the Iron Key area, and we'll end up... That'll probably wrap us up, actually, going through the Iron Key area. And I'm basically at the end, so I'll see, like, try and figure out what else I've missed doing. Uh, I know there are, like, some items, like, with pyromancy and stuff like that. Like, over by the Iron Keep that I missed that maybe I should go back and get. And DLC's coming out pretty soon here, so once the Iron King DLC comes out, Crown of the Iron King, then obviously I'll have a bunch more stuff to do. Uh, if only you could jump up there, but you can't. But you can't. Alright, I think that's actually everything over here. I don't think I missed that anything. If I remember correctly. So, yeah, anyways, I thought it'd be fun to talk about the whole E3 experience, because that's really what it was, was in this area. And again, it was much, much darker. It really was, and it, I actually preferred that atmosphere of it. And I'm not, I'm not trying to complain about this game or bitch about it. I actually, a lot of people really dig into this game now. And I still enjoy it. I think it's a really good game. I mean, I personally, personally, I prefer Dark Souls 1. Um, I, I just honestly think Dark Souls 1 is a better overall game. But, I mean, hey, if you prefer this game, that's fine. And I still think you, there some people are really, I don't know. I'm thinking like Terra Mantis just released a video like for his Patreon pitch. And it's kind of annoying because like people were really just, instead of paying attention to this video that we all, a lot of us pitched in to help out with, like Ouroboro did, I did, um, Halkai Drake was in it, 
Sunlight Blade was in it. And no one commented on anything except for just complaining about Dark Souls 2. It's just like, alright, come on, guys. Like, yeah, alright. Like, I agree, Dark Souls 1's a better game, but this is still a really good game. And, uh, I don't know. It, it just bothers me that how much people complain about it to the extent that they do. And I know it's the internet. And I know. I know it's gonna happen because it's the internet, but it's just like, come on, chill out. Like, it's, it was a fun game, and honestly, did you stop playing the game halfway through and be like, this game is crap? No, I guarantee that just about everyone, not everyone, I'm sure, but just about everyone playing or complaining beat the game. And that's 100 hours of content that they played through and probably still enjoyed through their first playthrough, and then they're just like, oh, it does, it's not as good. Okay, fine. But it's still a really good game. Like, you know? I will say that I do think Bloodborne looks... Person. Again, personally, I think Bloodborne looks better than Dark Souls 2, and I'm really hyped up about it. I'm kind of debating if I want to do a Dark or Bloodborne impressions video or not, from what we saw at Gamescom. Because I didn't play it, but a lot of it's stuff that I saw at E3. So a lot of things are things that, like, well, I kind of already talked about this stuff, because I saw it at... Well, you, a lot of the things that you guys are seeing now are things I already saw at E3. And there's some new info out on Bloodborne now, uh, that we got from Gamescom. But like I said, a lot of it is stuff that we got that I saw at E3. So it's just like, how much do I should I really talk about it? I actually find these guys to be pretty difficult. Um, I'm not that good at these guys. I found a lot of times I just prefer to uh, just hide and use arrows because I'm not very good at these guys. It's because I don't get very much practice against them, I'm sure. But yeah, I actually find these guys pretty tough. Maybe there should have been more enemies like this that are just difficult. Okay, get away. I don't... Oh! Stop trying to ram it. Oh, jeez! I'm trying to get back into my hole. I'm trying to get back into my hole so I can heal up. Oh! Oh, my God. That was so close. That is why I usually use arrows, because I am just no bueno. Oh, okay. We got the other one's attention. All right, well, now that the other one's attention has been got... I'm not even doing anything to this guy right now. Uh, okay. I just don't want those other fireballs to come at me while I'm trying to deal with him. Alright. Oh, he only spun at me after I attacked him. Alright, that's one. One out of the way. And we got the cracked red eye orb. I think if you kill all them, it makes the fire go away, possibly? I'm pretty sure... Or the fire pillars... Alright, this guy's not happy now. He's like, you killed my friend. And I'm like, I know, I'm a jerk. I know, but you guys were spitting fireballs. Whoa, you just like really sent me flying there. I think that was probably a glitch. You, these guys, these guys are, I, they're fun to fight because they're, they're so hard to me, again. I'm sure some people are like, Dave, these are the easiest monsters ever. Uh, uh, not for me. <laughs> Some people are better than me at certain things. That's cool. That's that's cool, actually. I like that. All right, second one down. Another cracked red eye orb. What does that say about them? It says that they're dicks. Oh, we get the rebel's great shield here. Oh, nice. Nice. I didn't realize that. All right, rebel's great shield. I'm gonna go ahead and equip it for a moment so we can look at it. All right, rebel's great shield was actually a submission shield that won for the contest for submitting shields and the raven was supposed to indicate Thelka when it was initially submitted and i think that's actually was the name of it was rebel's great shield and we look at this because uh i i don't remember it could have not have been the original name but i think it might have been these were supposed to be a Velka thing so shield of the rebel rime uh because it's supposed to be a raven there rime and velstat were known or crow rime and velstat were known oh uh, it might be rame it might be Rhyme, it might be Raimi. I think there actually is a proper way to say it. I think it might be Raimi or something, but I'm gonna keep on going with Rhyme, because I just can't remember. I'm sorry. For anyone who gets bugged out by that stuff. Rhyme and Velstat were known as the left and right arms of the king, until their wills clashed, and Rhyme was deemed a traitor. The Black Raven is despised as an augur of death, but it was Rhyme's favorite bird. So, Black Raven, connection to Velka! Oh, our only other one! That I wish there was more of, and uh, if only there was more Velka in this game. If only. Velka's so awesome. So anyways, um, 
This, uh, I was kind of saying, like, okay, well, we fought someone who looks just like Volstad, who's golden. It'd be interesting if it turns out it was Raime. And I don't really think it's the case, but I want to point that out as a possibility. Now, the fact that they don't have the Rebel's Grace Shield, with you, you would think that Raime would have because of this, would mean that's probably not Raime. But it's, it still is a possibility. If it, they were the right and left arm of the king, that they would have similar gear and things like that. There's just something that I just wanted to throw out there just to think about. I'm not saying it is the case. It's just worth thinking about. Even more cracked red eye orbs here. We're going to become Blood Brother, apparently. With all this. Oh, this guy. Oh, you. Oh, jeez. I didn't think they were. Bold. I thought they ended up going, like, closer to him as it continued on. No, 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 no. Oh, jeez. Oh, I got destroyed. See you guys in a moment. What did you just do? That was ridiculous. I feel like I need to show that. Because that was so ridic. Yeah, unfortunately these guys come back. That was actually my major concern with dying. So I didn't want to have to kill them all again, but I got to. I just got to. I gotta do it. Sorry, man. I'm like debating if I want to show this or not, but I guess if I die, I'll be worth it. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so bad at these guys. It's ridiculous. All right, one more, one more. Nope, not going to get it. You shouldn't have gotten greedy. You should just roll. What? Was that? Oh, I thought that was going to be the death. Oh, man. I'm so bad at these guys. All right, so gonna kill this one again so I can try and clear them all out. Just test out the whole fire thing that I was talking about before. Well, you make me slide, man. Alright, there we go. Alright, alright, alright. Actually, I don't mind this leapfrogging around too much. Because I can actually deal with it. Leapfrogging? Okay. Oh, no! Stop ramming me with your head. Oh, pfft. flying around. Where did he go? People are just flying left and right. All right, there we go. That deals with two. So they're not dropping cracked red eye orbs now. So I wonder if they only just do that as a one-time thing. All right, so I guess I will just do this and uh, go with the long shots here. I guess I should probably use my long blow. My long blow. My long bow plus seven. Whoops. And see if I can do more damage with that. Whoops. 200. Yeah, it does a little more damage. 603. Did I hit him twice somehow? 201. Oh, I must have hit him in his underbelly or something. And maybe that hurts him for more. No. Why don't I hit your neck? Test that out. Alright, let's try again. Playing smart this time around. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Nope. Neck. Oh yeah, that definitely hurts him for more. Alright, let's go for his neck then. So I don't waste more arrows. 402. It's like double damage down there. Oops. There we go. 402. That is much better. I prefer that. That is the way to kill them. I cracked red eye orb, and there is one more up here, as you can see. Alright, so let's do with this. Oh shoot. Alright, yeah, I was like, I don't think you'll be able to hit me, but it's kind of iffy. Iffy proposition there. Good, I got another one in. I should've just shot. I was waiting for him to go up, but... Might as well get the shot in, as I'm not regaining my stamina right now. Alright, stamina regen. Let's get in two shots for the 400. There we go. One and two. And this might be the kill there. Yep, that was it. Yep, and all the fire pillars went away, so... That would be accurate then. I wonder if all the fire and okay, magma doesn't go away down here, but the fire pillars do go away. So actually, uh, I don't think I did that in my own game. I think I died once and I just kind of ran up here. It's like ah, ah. But all right, cool. So fire pillars are gone. Fire pillars that apparently lead to death if you drop down, because I've never actually looked down in there. I'm, sh I'm sure if someone knows otherwise, let me know. Oh, we find the hawk ring here too. So that's that's a cool thing to mention. So here we have the hawk ring. Uh, let's go ahead and get to it. 
So that would be from Dark Souls 1, old Leo Ring. Oh. Wait, is it not next to the old Leo Ring? Oh, there, there it is. The Hawk Ring. So that would be from Hawkeye Go. A ring grazed with the engraving of a hawk. Extends the range of arrows. Blue-eyed Durgo, the nomadic bowman, had many a valiant victory in battle. Half owing to the boon of this ring. So that's one of the few things we get about Lanifer. Uh, Durgo is from Lanifer. Uh, at least I believe that's the name of uh, where the traveling merchants are. Yeah, Lanifer. So Durgo's actually a hero from Lanifer. So this is one of the very, very few things. We can also get Durgo's hat, which is kind of similar to what I'm wearing right now. I think it has a monocle. And Durgo is from Lanifer himself. So that's one of the very few things. But somehow Lanifer got a hold of uh, the hawk ring, which is from Hawkeye Go. Or Goff. Sorry, it's pronounced Goff. Uh, as he himself says in Dark Souls 1. But that is from Hawkeye Goff in Dark Souls 1. And that's it's kind of weird that they only give you two of the rings in this game. So you get the old Leo ring and the hawk ring. But we don't get the wolf ring and we don't get uh, the hornet ring, which would be from Kieran and Artorius. And maybe there's a reason for that. Uh, maybe somehow the lover's rings ended up together or something. Or maybe we'll see it in a future DLC, which I think is actually a strong possibility that they saved it for the DLCs. Now that the DLCs are out, and I know that's a possibility. Uh, that one looks like it just drops down onto ground. I'm so curious. I just don't want to die. That one looks like it drops down onto ground, too. Uh, alright, so is there anything else over here that I missed? Other than the fire drake stone and the hawk ring, which is what I really wanted to grab. You can actually drop down here from above. You don't need to do this. You just equip some, like... Oh, here we go. I thought there was something I was missing. You just equip, like... I, I know German Spies done it, and he was actually the first one that I know of to point it out. But you just equip uh, various gear for surviving falls. You can drop down here. Alright, we have Flame Quartz Ring plus one. Makes sense with everything we're seeing. And then, again, this is that outside area where if you look from outside, uh, over by where Jay is, uh, that fallen giant, and this is... You can see all these flame pillars. You know, I'm kind of curious about why can we see a gate there? I don't remember there being a gate. I, mean, I guess there must have been. I just don't recall it. Uh, do you see a gate from the other end? I really don't remember that. I just remember noticing the fire pillars. Oh! Oh, oh, oh okay, my bad. Alright, so this is the end. Sorry, this end over here is where Jay is. Through here. And oh, look, there's like a sword sticking out there. Cool. Anyways, <laughs> Uh, and he spears as well, but uh, the sword really stood out to me. Oh shit. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. At least I tested it out. Alright, I'm gonna get my souls back, warp back to Majula, and that'll wrap this up. So I'll see you guys in a moment. Alright, so the fire pillars are back, as you can see there. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just drop down and um, do that method for getting it and try to make sure I survive. Otherwise, this will be really dumb. But, yeah, I'm going to try to survive the drop. Alright, so what we're going to equip is... Silver Cat Ring. Where is my Silver Cat Ring? I think that should be enough to survive it, but let's see if I have the other padded ring, which I don't think I got. Wait, does the flower boots help for it? I don't think so. Flower skirt? I know there's, like, the cat bottoms that you can get, but I don't think I ever got them. Nope. Alright, well, I'm going to try it. Oh, this could be really bad if I die. Oh, it will be really bad. It could not, it's not that it could be. It will be really bad if I die. Alright. Shoot. Ah. Don't want to do it now. I'm getting cold feet. Alright, let's go ahead and heal again. Alright, well. Oh, shoot. Don't want to drop on the flame. That would be bad. I'm trying to find the highest point. I'm just not sure what it is. I also don't want to drop next to like a bunch of those guys. They're just going to immediately kill me. Alright. Let's try over here, I guess. I suppose. I think you're gonna come to life, right? Yeah. Alright. Uh-huh. Where can I drop without dying right away? That is the question on my mind. Well, you know what they say. Fuck it. Oh, I survived, I survived, I survived. Okay. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. And let's get the hell out of here. Alright, did it! Okay, I will see you guys back in Majula. Alright, guys, we're back in Majula. So, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk to the Emerald Herald, get a couple level ups. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead over to, uh, 
Molin, because I don't think I ever finished that whole thing with him. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't know if I... I I'm not going to get the level up, so I'm just going to get some armor from Molin. And once you get him all the way up, he starts selling all the boss boss gear, which has some good lore stuff on the bosses. And I think, uh, actually, Melentia should start at this point selling various NPC oh, items. I, I, I've stopped. They've been selling... Well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm surprising even myself, to be honest. Oh, <laughs> shoot. All right, I should have gone through his dialogue, but... This is, I guess, the second tier for him, is he's doing slightly better. Uh, he's like, he's still being nice, he's still being like, man, I'm actually kind of doing Did I well. mention before that, well, I'm not from these parts. I was on a journey, and somehow ended up here. The desolation here was disenchanting at first, but over time, things started to turn my way. Yeah, I've got a good few regulars now. They're all strangely desperate and... Quite willing to pay a premium. I think he's basically only talking about us. Sadly, some of them never come back, but, but I, I try not to think about it. I mean, I guess not when he says that. It's just interesting because, I don't know, maybe it goes along with the whole time distortion thing. That sword that you've got, may I um, have a look All at right, it? Alright, so he's talking about the Blue Moon Great Sword right now. Hmm, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's interesting. It's... Oh, no, I'm afraid, sorry, I'm afraid this is a fake. It's not worth much at all. The original must be somewhere, I would imagine. So even he knows it's a fake. For some reason, I thought uh, I thought he didn't know it was a fake, but maybe he says he's been wanting the Blue Moon Grey Sword, and then he realizes looking at that it's a fake. I considered returning to my homeland, but I've decided to stay a while longer. I've started to turn a handsome profit now, and I can't bear to give it up. <laughs> I considered... All right, I let's go ahead and start uh, checking out some of these things that he's got. He's got some good stuff. So he's got the Looking Glass set. He's got the Smelter Demon set. He's got the Penal set. Uh, I think it's pronounced penal. Uh, all right, so I actually I like the some of the penal set. Like I like the straight jacket a lot. Tightly cinched belt presses against the waist. By by now, who knows who this was used to punish or for what reason? The spikes pointing inwards suggest that this was not only used to bind prisoners but to torture them as well. So spikes pointing inwards from the mask, which is uh, pretty terrible. It also increases your equip load. The handcuffs, a device used to restrict the use of hands. By now, no one knows who this was used to punish her for what reason. And that raises the power of pyromancy is again going along with the whole Witch of Isla thing. Uh, Tatter's skirt war that the guilty wore in shame, or wear in shame. By now, no one knows who this was used to punish her for what reason. Again, I think it's highly likely that it's the Princess of Ven. I, I could be incorrect in that, but that is my belief, my personal belief. I also love the Elite Knight set. I don't know why I never... I just think it's really cool looking. Again, that's from Dark Souls 1. It was like... Uh, one of, if not my favorite sets in Dark Souls 1. Eh, I just like that part. Eh, let's get the leggings through. Alright, so let's go ahead and buy some of the penal set. Smelter Demon, a lot of people use for, like, uh, that was, like, when this game first came out. The Smelter set was part of, like, the OP set that everyone was using. I don't think people really, for PvP, I don't think people really use it that much anymore, but let's go ahead and look at them. The old Iron King was possessed of a great bounty of ore, but was incinerated by a creature that rose from the infernal depths of the earth, which would be the Smelter Demon, as referring to. Uh, I think that's all it says for all of them. So again, it was actually the Smelter Demon who killed the old Iron King. Uh, so that's actually some interesting lore. And we'll find out more about him really soon, which is great. I'm actually going to go ahead and buy the Looking Glass Knight armor next, just because it's so expensive. Get it, get a hold of that. Those who wish to serve the king as loyal warriors must take the king's passage and face the Looking Glass Knight. Those who fail the test are sacrificed by the merciless sp specular monstrosity. Uh, so that is all it really is. is uh, simply for that. I love its helmet design. Really cool helmet design that it has. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that. And, wow, actually the armor's... Oh, I should have bought the legs. Oh, well, whatever. Alright, so that is what he's got for sale now. And let's go... Thanks ahead. very... You're welcome. Forget to buy something. Uh, I considered returning. Okay, so I think we rested the bonfire. I'll make him the... actually talk to us. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to get get us so out of zero souls. I'm gonna go ahead and kill myself, have zero souls, and then talk to him again. And I know this has been shown off before, but I figured I'd show it off as well. Uh, let's see. Next person I wanted to talk to is Melentia. See if she's got any more sets. I knew. I am back. Deeply ones. Maybe you're my only. All right. Let's see. She's actually got, uh, so, okay, so she's got Pate set, because if you remember, Pate, I believe Pate was the one that I chose to sell, kill, so this is how we can actually go ahead and get a set. So although it appears to be common armor, it has in fact been uh, meticulously customized, blind and mild-mannered Pate. This has been considerably altered, perhaps it was pillaged. 
So that's kind of what indicates like the negativeness for him is perhaps was pillage. But again, that's for like Crichton as well. So it's like the he says she said type of thing. So now that we bought some more stuff from her, she's gonna give us the glove of this gold serpent ring plus one. So that's pretty awesome. Not too special. I think she also gives you something even better if you talk to her even more. And you buy some more stuff from her. Uh, anyways, that's that's the first one she gives. I think she gives you like a cover skull silver ring plus two or something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and rest the the bone fire, and I will kill myself to see if that resets Molin. I'm probably way over on time at this point, but I, I know I was doing a lot of cutting in the first part, uh, so hopefully it's not too terrible. And yeah, so I don't know next time. Um, so next time, depending on what comes out first, it'll either be the DLC. Uh, or it'll be the final, depending on what time I'm able to record next. It'll be like the final final, like killing Vendrick, all that stuff. Or it'll be the DLC. So it really depends on what comes out and when I'm able to record next. But uh, if, or it's not, yeah, killing Vendrick and also killing Nishandra and all that. So uh, if it's doing the whole like wrap up type of thing, I'm going to get my souls later. If it's doing the whole wrap up thing, what I'm going to do is kill Vendrick. I'm going to go ahead and use his soul in the Shrine of Amana. I'm also going to go check out the dead area in the Shrine of Amana that I didn't before. And um, then I'm going to go ahead and kill Nishandra, do the whole Looking Glass stuff. And then I'm also going to talk to... Uh, I'm going to talk to Vendrick again after I finish the game and all that. And possibly go to the Iron Keep and get what I missed over there. And I think that it probably would r wrap up everything. If I miss anything, let me know. Otherwise, if the DLC's out, I'm going to do the DLC next and tackle that. Alright, so you can see he's like got this swagger, this cocky-ass look to him now that he's rich. So he, he goes from a humble beggar type of person to a total cocky dick. So, uh, really unlikable in a um, way. So but, have we met? he'll be nice oh, here now that we have zero it's souls. It's just I've been awfully busy lately. I upgraded my stock recently, although it may be a bit out of your reach. So just being a total dick. And now he sells like way more armor sets. So you can see he's got more armor that he sells, like the Alva set, which I love the Alva set. It's really cool. I actually wonder what, how good the Alva set is when you upgrade it all the way. It's actually now one of my favorite sets. I didn't really notice how much I liked it until facing the character who was uh, wearing the Alva set in the DLC. And I'm like, oh, I love the Alva set. Uh, anyways, Alva crossed many a land in search of a cure for St. Soretta's Sir uh, sickness, but failed and relinquished his knighthood. Uh, lots of cool stuff with Alva and Zuli the Witch, a lore on that that, uh, at some point, uh, I'd like to talk more about. That's all I'll say on that. Anyways, uh, oh yeah, now he sells Valstat set. He wasn't selling that before, so he even has more boss sets now. So we actually look at Valstat set now, and I think, yeah, that's the only other boss set he's added. So, Helm worn by the Royal Aegis. Originally imbued with the power of miracles, now soaked with dark after extended exposure in the undead crypt. So, that in the case he wasn't originally dark, it was after being in the undead crypt that uh, Velstat became dark, which I think is important. A knight from a faraway land was lured to this accursed land, but forgot even why he came, eventually reduced to a shadow of his former self. A uh, shadow of his former self, the whole dark thing. But, um... He's, it's, he was lured to this accursed land... So that could indicate that he was lured by Nishandra. So that still is a possibility. He was lured by Nishandra, possibly, and then became the king's right hand. Uh, but who knows? I, uh, it's, that, that's definitely a viable theory. Both of them are. In a spot of bother, are we? So this is where he's actually going to be cool, because we have zero souls. Here, take this. My compliments. And this is how you get the entire invisible aura set. Invisible specifically. There's the other way you get it, which is by, uh, there's a phantom who gets summoned, which, blink yeah, who it is, but there's a phantom who gets summoned in the Grave of Saints. You can keep on going and grinding against and, like, going new game plus, new game plus, 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 etc., etc. And he will drop this invisible one, but you can only fight him if you're offline. If you're online, he doesn't appear, and I think that's just, like, from Sofs digging at you, like, you're cowardly for playing offline, which I'll talk about in a bit. I'm rich! I'm rich! <laughs> I don't need to go home anymore. Home. Home? So him being a dick and now him just completely forgetting where, where he's from. Where is home? <laughs> I'm rich. Home. All right. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. All right, so uh, basically, like, he does at least do that one nice thing where he remembers what it was like to be poor. So at least, like, he's got that going for him, even though 
He's basically become a cocky dick. He still remembers, so that's good. Uh, at least the poor part, not where he's from. Uh, yeah, so anyways, uh... What I was going to look at... Sorry, I was just kind of blanked out on what I was going to look at. I'm a little tired, so if anyone's wondering, but why? So, uh, we get the armor of Aorus from him, which you can see is completely invisible. Uh, or not completely, but it's transparent. So, the armor of Aorus has some lore on why that is, which is armor of the kings of the desert land of Jugo, again, where Ben Hart's from, Jugo, first worn by Aurorus, or Aorus, the land's heroic founder. According to legend, the armor of Aorus is composed of a mysterious substance that cannot be seen by cowards. What your eyes tell you. And, uh, this particular one raises your equipment load. But, basically... Uh, I think that's, you can also, you can get the version that you see, and that's in New Game Plus and further, or by using Bonfire Aesthetics, there's an enemy over by the, um, by the pirate area, and over on the ship, and on the ship, if you fight this guy, you can end up, uh, you, you basically have to keep on going New Game Plus, New Game Plus, Plus Plus, etc., except there's a trick where you, you don't have to. Uh, and if I can remember the video I'll, and to remember to do it, I'll try to link to it. But there's a trick where you don't have to. But basically, that's how you get the visible version. So there is a visible, visible version of this set, and you, it's gettable, uh, or you can acquire it. But again, I think the fact that you get it by being offline for the invisible version, I think, again, that's just from soft digging it in at you as a player, which I think is pretty hilarious. But guys, that wraps up this one, this uh, edition of Let's Play Dark Souls, Kita edition. Kita will return... Uh, in Demon Souls when I finish this all up, but you know, I've got more DLCs to do and all that and then Kita will definitely return in Bloodborne as well. So anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Peace guys. Later.